Whether you're making a documentary about internet relationships or making a documentary about relationships without using the internet, one thing seems commonplace. You're probably going to meet some really interesting people. This is Movie Night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night. I'm your host, Jonathan Pollan. Tonight we'll be taking a look at two internet-related documentaries that recently made their way to your living room this past month. The first by way of DVD, the second of which by way of YouTube rental. Tonight's first movie, though, is the critically acclaimed favorite from the 2010 Sundance Film Festival, Catfish. Before I begin, I should mention that Catfish is a film that is perhaps best explored with absolutely zero knowledge about its plot. But if you've already heard something about it or had the ending spoiled for you, it doesn't diminish its impact or effectiveness in any way. Either way, I will try to do my best to avoid any major spoilers. Henry Yost and Ariel Schumann take us along for an adventure in the life of Ariel's brother, Nev, a young photographer in New York City. It is a startlingly honest and exposing tale, as we are witness to a series of events as they unfold in real time. We watch as Nev begins to develop a friendship with Abby, an eight-year-old child prodigy artist from rural Michigan, after she starts sending him paintings of Nev's published photographs. Eventually, Nev begins talking to Abby's older sister, Megan, whom he starts to form a long-distance relationship with, exclusively through phone calls and Facebook. Where our trio of documentary makers take us from here is both exciting, surprising, and emotional, but it is most certainly not a horror thriller as some trailers have made it out to be. The filmmaking from Brother Ariel is deliberate here, in some instances almost prodding into the life of his brother, but it's these techniques that bring us that much closer to Nev's private thought process and the feelings he's developing for Megan along the way. It's in these scenes of brutal honesty where we see these characters feeling nervous, uncomfortable, and vulnerable that we truly appreciate and emphasize with them and their respective situations. Catfish is exemplary in its ability to completely immerse its audience in its world for a thought-provoking and captivating 86 minutes, all of which truly feel like you're experiencing these moments right alongside Nev, Henry, and Ariel. Even if you believe you've had the ending spoiled for you, this film is a poignant reflection of human character and how some of us act in extreme situations, and it is definitely worth watching. Much has been said about this movie's supposed authenticity, but in my opinion, it is 100% genuine and surprisingly suspenseful. Catfish, an amazingly honest character study. Well, that's what I thought about Catfish. Now let's see what you had to say about it in the YouTube comments. Some varying opinions there, so let's bring the rate of now to see how we both scored Catfish. An 8 and a 7. While this movie may not have been a true thriller, it was a brazen examination of human relationships and it was truly captivating. I thought it was great. Enjoying it for its engrossing nature and suspense, by perhaps being turned off by some of the misleading hype surrounding the film, you scored it a cool. Now let's transition from a film about online relationships to one that refuses to use the internet. Looking for Miss Locklear. Filmed in the summer of 2006 by internet comedians Rhett McLaughlin and Link Neal, Looking for Miss Locklear is the story of... Actually, you know what? How about we just let the men themselves introduce their movie? Hey guys, Rhett and Link here. Looking for Miss Locklear is a 60 minute documentary we made about our search for our first grade school teacher. We had some interesting rules that we set in place. We couldn't use the internet, we couldn't use the phone book. We had to use people and conversations that would lead us from one person to another and we got into a lot of unexpected things and it made the movie. We are honored, Jonathan, that you are watching and reviewing our movie. But we'll tell you, if you don't like it, don't tell anybody. Tell them that it was awesome or we won't be friends anymore. Just kidding. Thank you for that introduction, fellas, and luckily for our friendship, I honestly thought your little film was quite good. And as difficult as it may be to give this movie a proper critical analysis without any subjective bias, I will do my best. Rhett and Link artfully open their film with a delightfully nostalgic look at the past, introducing the audience to their friendship, their humble beginnings, and most importantly, why we should be invested in their quest to find some school teacher they haven't seen in 20 years. From there, using only word of mouth, we join them on their journey through the rural heartland of North Carolina, as we're introduced to so many memorable characters. Perhaps realizing that an entire movie about a simple search wouldn't be very fascinating, these YouTube big shots skillfully direct the narrative around the people they meet along the way, transforming the movie into a look at humanism at its finest. As Rhett and Link bounce from town to town, we learn more about their friendship and motivation as well, 
both through soft-spoken narration and fly-on-the-wall audio from their various conversations. While it is always fun to watch them interact and sing along with the locals they meet along the way, it's the individual stories of struggle, success, and determination that really make Looking for Miss Locklear a compelling documentary. From a 65-year-old who still dreams of making it in the music business, to dozens of members of the Lumbee Native American tribe who desperately yearn for official recognition from the United States government. Unfortunately, it's also these fascinating sub-stories around each character that make the film feel a bit disjointed at times, as only the search itself receives a proper three-act structure. Luckily though, some on-screen text at the end of the movie brings some closure to the few of the stories we've been introduced to. By the final act, whether or not Rhett and Link actually find their long-last first grade teacher is inconsequential, because as the classic proverb has shown, it's more about the journey than the destination. And the journey here is a fantastic one. Especially since you can rent it right here on YouTube for only $2, there's no reason not to take that journey with them. Looking for Miss Locklear, a vivid slice of Americana. Well, that's my review. Now let's read some of yours. All favorable reviews there, but let's bring the right matic to see how we really scored Looking for Miss Locklear. A great and an awesome. There wasn't much about Rhett and Link's film I didn't like, but I also would have loved to have seen more done with it in certain places. I gave it an 8. Hopefully we can still be friends, guys. As expected, most of you loved this movie, really enjoying Rhett and Link's live performances in the films and the crazy characters they meet along the way, giving it a 9 out of 10. But that does it for this week's films, so now let's take a look at what's currently playing in theaters with some tweet critiques. Remember, if you're going to the movies this weekend, make sure to submit your Twitter review using the JPMN hashtag to have it featured on an upcoming episode. Next week, in honor of the 83rd Annual Academy Awards, I'll be quickly reviewing each of the 10 Best Picture nominees. 127 Hours, Black Swan, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are Alright, The King's Speech, The Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. And I'll also be giving you my prediction on which one I think deserves to win at the Oscars on February 27th. As always, I encourage you to buy, rent, or download any of these 10 films before next week's episode and let me know what you think about them by voting in the polls below or by leaving me a comment review. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching Movie Night. I hope to see you right back here next Friday. <laughs> <laughs>